Installing your own windshield, do it yourself. Oh shit, son. You can't do that. Okay, I'm wanting to uh, go over here. What we're going to be using to do the windshield. This is the do-it-yourself windshield installation. I've never done this before, so probably anybody watching this, there's a good chance you've never done it and you're trying to figure out how to do it. There's quite a few videos on YouTube, but, uh, you know, it's one of those things where there's a lot of information that's just not put out there. You know, it's a proprietary uh, business. I, I, I've never seen something as bad as the windshield business. I mean, HVAC gets pretty bad about that, you know, where people just yell at you. You try to ask questions, and it's like, don't do it. Let a professional do it, you know, and it, it's like, you know, they make it really hard to get stuff, hard to figure things out, and uh, at least if you want to do it the right way or the ideal way or however you want to look at it, but... Like a few other people that posted videos, I say the same thing. Hey, wait a second. I do my own engine. I do my own transmission. I do all my own everything. My wiring. You know, I, I, I've done professional building maintenance. HVAC. I mean, you name it, I do it. So it's like, what, I'm going to stop at a windshield? You know, the guy making 10 bucks per hour at Safety Light can do it better than me. Well, he probably can. He's been doing it for a long time, and he's got a lot of good cheat tools, which we're not going to have today. But uh, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is go over what I'm using and why. So I decided to go with Dow, and the reason I decided to go that route is because I got a Chevrolet. It's an S10, an 82 S10 I'm going to be doing this on, and uh, most of the OEM stuff in the States... They use Dow. Dow is the way to go. So uh, Sika would have been my runner-up, and it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier to get your hands on and what a lot of people, including a lot of safety light locations, are using. But, uh, all righty, let's go right to the thing. I am using the Beta Seal U400 NMNC. And I'm going to go ahead and put a... Uh, insert right about now and the reason I chose this one is because not only is it the good stuff the OEM type stuff but it requires a primer and I'm not a big fan of stuff that's primerless I think you're asking for trouble I mean if you're a wham bam thank you ma'am pop a job out get them driving in an hour kind of guy it's probably the way to go and it'll save you a little money it's a lot easier but I, I'm going to use the Dow system so the uh, primer list if you want to go that route which is a lot easier to get I want to think I want to say it's like you 418 or something I'll post that picture right now it's uh, <clears throat> not the route I'm going so let me go ahead and zoom in here because if you're wanting to do this, I want to try to help you out and put you in the right direction. Whether I do all this right or not, I definitely think this is the best way that you can do it. That's just my opinion, but I've spent hours and hours studying the internet and everything you can think of trying to put together what the best system was. So I'll also show you close-ups of this stuff because you know usually like everybody is like far back you know oh i use that i use that i use that no 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 somebody wanting to buy this may want to see it because you you're going to get a picture that looks similar to that online but maybe you want to actually see it you know what i mean and as always my videos are a little long i ramble i Rant, I rave, I give too much information, but that's only because I do not want to be the guy that doesn't give enough information because that pisses me off and it's my pet peeve. So there you go. It basically, I bought two. I figured I need one to play with and one to figure out all my settings on the gun and the caulk gun and all that kind of stuff and 
you know, you don't want to do this and find out you came four inches short on adhesive. So, but that's how it looked bagged. Just kind of like that. This stuff is not easy to get. I'm going to let you know right now. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. It cut me off. I got a new Galaxy Note 9, and I had it on the max resolution, and it limits me to five minutes, and anybody who's followed my videos know that that's not going to work. So I'm just going to put it on a regular HD, or UHD I picked, and it doesn't look like I got a time limit. So where were we here? Uh, there's the cap, the nozzle. What I want to show you on this nozzle, one of the biggest questions I had that nobody wanted to answer Nobody gives it, nobody wants to, if you email them or whatever, they don't want to tell you. What are the dimensions on the notch? Boy, it's hard to get this to focus right now, there's a lot of glare. Right above my thumb, I don't know if you can see it, you probably can't. Let's see if I go under light here. That's a little better. Right where my thumb is, it actually has like little lines that show you where to cut it and where to notch it. Now, I'll be honest with you. Oh, and I'll give you measurements for that right now. Then if you're using some other brand, you could probably figure out how to properly notch it. But uh, I was worried about that. You know, I was going to kind of free ball it and just kind of guess. But it's nice to know, you know, where to put my notch and, you know, how much tip to cut off. Because that's the kind of little fucking tedious shit that people don't like to tell you. And again, this could be a real easy job if you got all of the information. So let's just not give all the information and tell you to have a professional do it, right? Wrong. Okay, so there's our urethane. Now, we're going to have to prep for that urethane, okay? I guess you could go the cheap route, buy an $8 tube of shit, primerless, use a little Windex and you're good to go, okay? Well, you're going to worry about shit because, you know, you got your other additives, especially like Windex with ammonia. You don't want that shit. I mean, there's so many different additives that can leave, leave a, a residue behind. And I mean, even a lot of residue cleaners leave a residue behind. And I mean, this is glass. You know, whenever you're gluing glass, shit always gets a little different because glass isn't porous, you know. And, uh... It, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to get a good contact or a good bond with glass. So this is the beta system, right? Basically, you're going to have your glass cleaner, which this is probably overkill. But I figured I might as well go the whole full nine yards here. Plus, I want to get a good video together that somebody can try to figure this out for themselves without a whole lot of elbow grease trying to figure out all this fucking different shit. But, uh, oh, why do I got to get a call when I'm on the phone recording? Anyways, uh, it's the Beta Clean GC800. And if I got any additional information, like where I bought it, how much, I'll post it now. And I don't know if it's special or not. All I know is it's guaranteed to work with the Dow system because it's from Dow. So I'm not going to take any chances. But uh, let me try to give you a better picture of all that.
See, that's good to know, too, because, like, it says don't store under 41 degrees. So, I mean, if, you know, you're in Canada and it's, like, fucking January and negative 30, you probably don't want to have this stuff shipped to you. May not be the best time to do that. They're not going to tell you that, though, on their website. They just want you to fucking buy it. Yeah, go ahead, fuck up. Then we can either sell you more or sell more to the guy that's going to fix it for you. Right? Got to have that capitalist way of thinking. Got to squeeze every fucking penny out of everybody that you can. It's 2018. That's, that's how life is. Right? Everyone's got to be that way. I don't know if this is from the company I got it from or what, but uh, there's that. Okay, so now that we spent an hour talking about the uh, glass cleaner, now we're going to get into the, uh, the Beta Braid F1. And I'm going to be honest with you, this is the shit that sold me on the Dow system. I mean, you can find other good companies that got the primer, but this Beta Braid, I mean, there's just... Great reviews on this stuff. People love it, especially the guys that are what I call the high-end glass installers that aren't cheaping out and they're, you know, trying to use the best shit. This is what they use. And let me tell you, if you're not an installer and you don't have a license, yada, 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 you don't have a connection, you don't butt fuck your uncle, that's the sale, whatever, you know, it's not easy to get this stuff. And hopefully that's that was just, you know, when I was trying to get it, not how it always is. But I'll post a link, an information link now. But uh, here you go. This is the Beta Braid. When I got it, it was already kind of collapsed in like that. Same thing, store between 41 and, uh, what does that say, 85? I got to move my camera to see it. It's got a little smudge on there. So that's, that's, that's the dial beta braid. And this stuff, basically, you know, you're going to pre-clean your glass, and then you're going to use this stuff. And then depending on the source, you know, either you're going to use a lint-free paper towel, or you're going to use a, not a chamois, what the fuck do you call it? A mi microfiber tile or a, uh, you know, something that's not going to leave lint. And naturally, you know, if you're reusing stuff, you don't want to, you know, have heavy laundered stuff that's going to leave a residue from the cleaning process. I mean, I would use something new and preferably something that maybe if you could verify it's not laundered. Like, it's kind of tricky. Personally, I think Dial should have sold their own line of uh, wipes just to take all the guesswork out. You know, they could have put Dial on there and put a markup on it and some sucker like me would buy it just because then you don't have to worry. Except for I think a lot of this shit's overkill anyways. But, but oh well, we're going to do it right. The Beta Prime. You know, this is the stuff that once your surfaces are clean and once your surfaces are prepped, you're going to use this. It's this 5504G all-in-one primer. And it, it basically, it, it doubles as a pinch weld sealer. Let me zoom in on it here. So it's going to be a primer, a pinch weld sealer, everything all-in-one. This stuff actually wasn't that hard to get. But the uh, this stuff and this stuff, you, you're going to look a little bit for it. 
Everyone's going to try to pawn off the second hand shit on you. The second class shit. Made in Michigan. Can't go wrong with the USA product, right? I guess that's up for debate. But I like supporting my country. I try to do it whenever it's feasible. Alrighty, so there's your beta prime, right? So that's your system. You're going to uh, clean with beta clean. You're going to deep clean with the uh, F1, beta braid F1. Then you are going to roll back and you're going to clean again with this, the beta clean. Then you are going to prime any surface that is going to come in contact with your adhesive. Now I should also say when I got the, uh, <clears throat> the beta prime, I think I actually got that on Amazon. If I didn't already show you, let me give you a beta prime info doc now. But uh, I went ahead and got daubers. I don't believe it included it or it didn't say and I didn't want to chance it. So I just got a big old bag of daubers, you know, kind of give you a size reference there. I got a few because you don't want to keep reusing them. You know, a lot of people I'll actually say dip, swipe, never re-dip. Well, I, I agree on the never re-dip. But I'll tell you what, I mean, when I go to do it on my... Uh, on my truck, I, I think I'm going to rub it in there a little bit. That's questionable, and you can argue about that in the comment boxes, that it should be a one swipe regardless, but you'll see when that time comes how I'm going to do it. Can you see the brand? Not that you really need to know on these, but... Uton. Y-U-E-T-O-N. We only sell your expectations. Let's make things better. Wow, that's a pretty bold statement. Just like that, huh? Spend a few fucking dollars on some glorified puffballs and you just met my expectations. Okay, so at any rate, let me move this stuff to the side. I'm working. <clears throat> right now it's about 48 degrees. And I'm going to try to do this at the peak of the afternoon because I'm going to hit 56, 58. So I'm actually going to bring that stuff back inside. I think it's like 10 o'clock right now in the morning. I'm going to bring that inside. Uh, part of me thinks it should be the same temperature as everything I'm working with. But the other part of me thinks it should be room temperature and it may work better. I know the adhesive would definitely spread better if it was 15, 20 degrees warmer. But uh, okay, what I'm going to use, here's another uh, different way of doing it. Everybody on there is using these beautiful battery-powered caulk guns, okay? And, of course, DeWalt's the flagship. Seems to be the one everybody wants. Shit's expensive. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what is it? Three, four hundred for the DeWalt. They're, the Milwaukee's, that, that one's real popular because it works really well. And it's, you know, not priced quite as, quite as overpriced as DeWalt. But the cheapest I found was a Ryobi. And it was like a buck fifty, a hundred and fifty bucks. But then you gotta buy the battery. All my batteries are Dewalt and Craftsman for my power tools. So I mean I looked for adapters and I couldn't quite find the right adapter unless if I wanted to stack adapters and then it's fifty bucks an adapter and then I'm spending a hundred bucks on adapters and then I'm like, well now I might as well get the the Dewalt. You know, you get it and all that. So I, I I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not doing this shit for a living. I don't need a fucking $400 caulk, caulk gun. And I found this. Pneumatic caulk guns. Which I actually am surprised they don't use them in the field. You think they'd be a little bit lighter. You could probably use a pancake compressor. Most people say these don't chew through that much air. We're going to find out and show them for Big Blocks Productions today. 
I've never used one before. The bad thing about using this is I can't find settings. Like I have like a recommended range from the manufacturer on a PDF I found that I'll throw up now. But at any rate, this is a Chicago pneumatic CP9885. This is the better design. Chicago pneumatic makes two of them. The cheaper one, I think, is like, I don't know, 25, 30 bucks. This one's like 40 to 50. I'll post the link now. But at any rate, I got mine used on eBay. Supposedly the guy used it a few times, didn't have a need for it anymore. I got the good one for 20 bucks. And the good one's supposed to have a much better trigger control. It operates at a higher PSI, yada, yada, yada. Uh, if you want to look into the cheaper one, I'll throw a picture of that up now. But at any rate, I haven't even opened that yet. I just got it, and that's how the guy literally sent it to me. So... We'll open that and see what that's all about when we get to that part. Alrighty. This is going to be my prep shit. And uh, this is going to be real questionable. I mean, you hear a lot of different shit, how people do it, how you shouldn't do it. But uh, the one thing you know for sure is you want it to be lint-free. I wanted to be able to do this shit from Walmart, you know what I mean? So that no matter where you are watching this, you could duplicate it the way I did it because I'm assuming it's going to work. I'm also going to post if it works and I'm going to keep posting updates in the comment box because if it doesn't work and I fuck it all up, I want you all to know that. But I have a gut feeling it's going to work out. Things just kind of work out for me. I know windshields are hard. And if you're not tech savvy, not tech savvy, if you're not a mechanically inclined individual, it may not be the best job for you. Or if you think you're mechanically inclined because you're always doing mechanical stuff, but you're the kind of guy that's always fucking up or always busting the knuckle and shit that, you know, really after the first, you know, year of doing mechanical shit, you should kind of grow out of. If you're still doing that stuff and you're always forgetting things and man, this may not be the project for you. But if you're a pretty good do-it-yourselfer and you can figure things out and, you know, you like to say you did it yourself, do it. More people need to do this. Let's break this industry down. I'm sick and tired of people thinking that windows have to be done by professionals. You know, and then you look at half these professionals and the jobs they do and, you know, what makes them a professional? I mean, the, the industry doesn't, it's not even officially regulated. You got a lot of little bullshit. Oh, I'm not going to go into all that. Anyways, okay. I went ahead and just got Scott Shop Heavy Duty Towels, okay? They look pretty similar to the shit that I saw online. They don't say they're lint-free, but they sure look like it. We'll find out when we open it up. But the price was right. You know, that was like $275, I think. Bam. $275. Done deal. The fucking tech wipes and all the good shit online that I'd have to order, that's all like $15, $20, $30, and then you got to pay shipping, and fuck that, man. You know, if a couple pieces of Link get on there, I think it's going to be okay. You've seen some of these hack-ass jobs that nobody understands how it survived, and it survived. You know, you don't drive down the road and have people's windshields flying out. You don't hear of that that person that got into a car accident and they died because the windshield structurally wasn't right. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. I'm just going to say it's, you know, not, not, not happening all the time. So let's not be too paranoid here. So there's that. Some more Walmart cheapies. Just, what, 280 I think, something like that. Auto drive, multi purpose edgeless microfiber. And I'm touching it, so I'll probably grab one from the center when I do it just to try to keep my finger oil off there. Mr. Clean Eraser. I'd like to say this is all me. Nobody's fucking said use a Mr. Clean Eraser. So, I mean, I don't think there's any additives. And actually, when you look at it, you can see that, that the uh, original doesn't have any added cleaner you know so let's just hope nothing's in there 
but I love these things, man. There's been shit that it's almost impossible to clean. The fucking bald motherfucker comes through every single time, right? Am I wrong? Does anybody have anything bad to say about Mr. Clean? You know? So I'm actually going to use this first because the way I look at it, if I use that before the beta braid, then the beta braid's not scrubbing in any particulate shit that may work its way into a groove, right? So I'll clean it with this first, and then I'll go ahead and, you know, use the glass cleaner on there, and then I'll do everything like normal. But I'm just going to kind of add that step in there because I thought, why the fuck not, you know? Scotch Bright. This is another questionable one. Uh, generally speaking... The few sources, and there's one guy that does a really good, he's a professional window guy, and he, he does a pretty good uh, YouTube video talking about, like, the F1 beta braid and all that stuff. They're not using this. They pretty much go straight to something like this or like this. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of roughing stuff up. I mean, even if it's little microscopic swirls on the glass, I, I want to try to do it. So again, I mean, this is one of those things, you know, do it at your own risk. I mean, they have scotch brights that, you know, say scuffless. These are, you know, the scuffing ones. I mean, I'm not going to go ape shit on the motherfucker, but I want to scuff it up a little bit with the beta one. You know what I mean? I'm actually probably going to do the beta twice. I'll do it once with this, and then I'll do it a last time with this, and then do my final cleans. But we'll see. I'm going to experiment. You know, if a couple of years goes by and my comment box says, hey, guess what? Still good to go. Then you're going to have to argue it's good to go. Right? No, some motherfucker is going to comment and, oh, you're not a professional. You can't do that. You ruined it. It's horrible. Well, go ahead. Give me something to read. I'm also going to use some uh, isopropyl alcohol. And this is going to be another questionable step because I did the unthinkable, motherfuckers. I pre-painted where I'm going to put my windshield in. Ooh, scary. That's like the Cadillac no-no of all no-nos in the windshield industry. Oh, no. You take that butt-fucking-naked metal and you put your fucking primer or your pinch mold seal on there and that's it. Well, let me ask you a question, okay? This windshield that I'm replacing is replaced. And when I took it out, I was blistered the fuck up with rust, which is what I see on a lot of my old shit because I do old, you know, vehicles, stuff that's older than the 80s. You know what I mean? And it's like 80s and older. There's always rust under there, man. So it's like you can't tell me that pinch weld primer does the trick. Nowhere on these vehicles do they use seam sealer or pinch weld primer? Because I personally, I think it's just seam sealer with a glorified name. Nowhere do they use it and not coat it in some way or form. You just don't do that. They say, oh, no, don't paint. Well, the fucking factory's painted. Now, in all fairness, the factory's painted and it's also baked in a bake booth. I mean, even if you repaint something, you can put lights on there. It's not like having a bake booth. You got to take all your electrical and your interior out to be able to put something in a bake booth. And nobody does that for the most part, generally speaking. So anyways, I'm going to also scuff on the truck where I, you know, I put the windshield in. And then I'm going to use the isopropyl alcohol to clean up where I scuff. And then I'm also going to use the beta system to clean it. And I'm also going to use the, uh, the, the beta pinch weld shit, the primer. So that's, again, just what I came up with, and I, I kind of want to test it out. You know, I got a lot of motherfuckers telling me what I can't do, and my number one question is, have you ever done it? And they'll probably say no. And if I say why, they're going to say, because you don't do that. And I'm going to say, okay. Well, didn't fucking Rage Against the Machine say, fuck you, don't do what they tell you, right? Sometimes you got to go by that. You know, maybe there's a reason somebody doesn't want you to do it a certain way. I don't know. Maybe they want my fucking shit to rust out and leak, so I got to come back and get a new window. All I know is my shit was blistered the fuck up, man. And I'm not just putting pinch weld on there. You know, I cleaned my rust up and I fucking did my shit up, which I'll go over in a second here. But at any rate, 
The rule of, oh, let me back up. Beta does say you can do it over paint. Now, unanimously, all the window guys are like, no, 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 fuck that. They're the only company that, blah, 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 blah. you know, and I, I will say that's a pretty general statement. I mean, baked paint, powder coated paint, you know, paint that's, you know, how long do you want it to dry? I mean, you get into a lot of fucking contingencies when you just say the word quote unquote paint. But at any rate, that's what I'm going to do. You know, ideally, you would probably use like a 400 grit sandpaper. I'm not going to do that because really, I mean, 400 grit sandpaper pisses me off, man. You're like scratchity, scratchity, scratch, and then it's all fucking clogged up with paint dust. And then you feel like you're just smearing around paint dust, you know. And again, I may be fucking up here, but that's this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually scuff with the Scotch Bright. Know that I got some deep scuffs that don't fully penetrate my paint. And then I'm going to use this shit on there. I'm going to fucking isopropyl it with one of these rags because I don't want to use acetone because acetone's going to either soften the paint or because it's not baked on, it's going to start eating my fucking paint. And I've already let my paint sit for a month. So I don't want to disturb it that much. This will be a quick clean. It shouldn't disturb it. It'll evaporate. And then I'll use the rest of the beta system. And it's going to be all, all good. I think. I'm pretty sure. We'll find out because I don't bullshit you. If it's wrong, I'm going to admit it. Hey, I fucked up. I'm a dumb fuck. Kick me in the nuts. You know what I mean? So, gloves. Actually, I had to buy some. I don't wear gloves. You know, I get greasy, I get dirty, I wash my fucking hands. I like to feel what I'm doing. You know, I don't like wearing fucking gloves on my dick when I'm having sex either. <laughs> At any rate, okay. So, let me put you on pause. Alrighty, the paint lineup. Yeah, I know, it's real half-assed. Rattle can, Walmart special. It's how we're rolling, you know. I'm going to end up painting this truck down the road anyways, and when I do that, all the glass is coming out, and I'm going to do it right, so it really doesn't matter. This is more of an experiment, and it's also for me to say, hey, wait a second, somebody said I couldn't do something. Not only did I do it, yeah, there's a difference between saying you can't do that and you shouldn't do that, but uh, I'm old school. I like etching primer. Now, I know some of these new urethane primers and shit. I mean, that's good stuff. I haven't fucked with it yet. I'm not a professional painter. I do believe that stuff overall is probably better, but I don't have that going on right now. I'm not set up for paint right now. This is the way we're going to do it. I'm old school. I love self-etching primer. It's just me. I've never had an issue with it. I mean, I've rattle canned a lot of shit. And I mean, I always, especially bare metal, always use self-etching primer. You know, it's got an acid in there that eats in and really cuts everything in there deep and really makes shit bond. And I mean, I love it. So, I did, I want to say, I did three light coats. You know, I didn't put it on too hard. I don't, I don't want you know, drips, and I don't want super, super thick paint that's just going to rip off with the urethane while I'm going 150 down the highway. But uh, three coats, and then I went ahead and used their automotive primer. I did three coats of that, and then I did three coats. I guess three was my lucky number, huh? Three coats of the Rust-Oleum. I just kind of went with the flat protective enamel. My truck's got a faded flat look, so that's just kind of what I use. But we're going to see. This is going to be the big test here, you know. Nobody does that. But I'm telling you, they tell you, oh, you can't paint over paint. I got buddies that restore cars, and for the most part, they outsource their windshields, you know. But they all paint their fucking shit, and they don't all put it in bake booths. And, you know, the, everything's fine, man. It's going to work out just fine. If it doesn't, I'm going to tell you. <clears throat> but there you go. I don't know if you could... Yeah, you could see the pox. Look at those fucking pock marks, man. You know, I mean, I cleaned it up. I wish I could have bead blasted it and all that, but I'll get back to it. But uh, I went ahead and I did the whole thing, man. You know, I even got a heavy tape line. 
because all I care about right now is the rust. I want it, I want it prevented. You know, I can make the paint look beautiful later, whatever. I just, I want to get a couple years out of this thing where it's not going to rust out. Yeah, you can't really see shit with the lighting. But now what I did do, even though the whole entire thing was all rusted the fucking hill. I mean, it's bad. It was blistered all over. You know, it's just pock marks all over. Made me sick. But at any rate, the center was fine. Probably because water never gets in that area. You know, everything pretty much just, you know, drips down and then, you know, kind of comes through. But I figured it, it would be a good insurance policy. I went ahead and I left the original buttle. Ah, I'm saying buttle. Original urethane. Kind of like everybody else does. You know what I mean? And that's going to have that little two foot section right there. Think about it like a windshield leash. If all my shit's fucked up, maybe I'll get lucky and that's going to be my little leash that's going to keep everything in. But I'll tell you what, man. I think once you put that urethane in there, I think it kind of makes like a suction. I think that stuff's going to fit good. You know, I've seen those videos where the guys look at the bad installations and pretty much just press the window out by hand. And it's like they didn't fly out of the car. So I think it's going to be good. You know, I, this is, I've let this cure for a month. It's been cold. It's uh, November. You know, like I said, it's 30, 40s at night. It's, you know, whatever during the day. I did the painting back at the last of the good days where I was getting 70s and then 60s at night. I had that for about two weeks, and then about the last couple of weeks here, we've had 30s, 40s, so it's pretty damn cured. I still smell it a little bit, which bugs me a little bit. To me, fully cured is when you can't smell it at all. I mean, it's very faint, but I can just slightly smell it. So, that's how we're going to roll. We're going to see what happens. Three. Okay. Now, as far as the window trim, and that pissed me off, got this cocksucker on eBay that sells it as a fucking molded for your windshield, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, guess what? Precision, I guess that's the company. All they do is take universal shit, cut it off their spindle, throw it in their bag, and then send it to you. So, yeah, no, this shit is definitely not made for an s10 it's universal they even got their little pictures that like that like showed this all being you know already formed and all that kind of stuff so i don't know it was cheap so i think i'm gonna roll with it they don't give you any instructions so i'm assuming that the wider side's gonna go towards the outside of the windshield and that's how we're gonna roll with it but maybe some of you professional window guys can tell me if this stuff's absolutely shit. I mean, it seems like it's decent quality, but I don't know. I don't deal with windshield trim too often. As a matter of fact, I've never dealt with it before other than ripping it out. So we're going to see how that goes. Windshields. Let me talk a little bit about windshields. Basically, everything that you're going to get that's aftermarket is made in China. You can see this one's uh, made in China. Fueo, Fuya, Fuckya, whatever glass industry. You know what really pisses me off? That's the shit that Safe Light uses a lot. And they used it on my 2006 Grand Prix when I had that windshield replaced because of a crack. I'm pretty sure it was them. You go to their website and they're like, oh yeah, you know, it's made in like St. Louis, Missouri or some shit like that. Made in the USA. Nah, -uh. Straight up China. Now this glass cost me 150 bucks. And I got it from windshield.net. I was looking at all the places and they all, you can tell they all use the same engine. And, and they're basically getting it from the same, same source. It's going to the same network of warehouses. But everybody was wanting 150 and windshield.net wanted 130 Well, they charged me 130 at the time of checkout. And then all of a sudden magically charged my credit card 150 bucks and said, oh, by the way, yeah, it's 150 bucks. So 
I think that was kind of shitty. I think they do that knowing that people like me are like, fuck it, I already ordered it. I need my windshield, and they got my business. But uh, if you get an OEM windshield, you're looking at, at least when I looked at it for this, PPG is the OEM for me. And I mean, that's four or five hundred bucks. So unless if I got something fully restored, perfect, ready to go, I'm going to settle for the China glass. A buck fifty works for me, especially if I'm going to try to uh, guinea pig doing this shit all redneck style. But that's another tip I found from another YouTube guy. <clears throat> oh, I got hiccups. Put it on a tire. If you don't have a, you know, a body shop seahorse type thingamajingy, you could put it on a tire. So, and if it looks like it's teetering too much, I may even just double up on tires when I prep the windshield. But I got to get one of those body shop things. I just always find ways around it. You know, if you owned everything out there, you'd be broke. But at any rate, that's my glass. So that's kind of what you can expect it to look like. Basically, you go through these glass companies and they network you with your closest big city warehouse and you go into that warehouse, and I will say it is impressive how much glass they got. I mean, you know, I want to say probably six or seven pallets high and just literally lined up, you know, two inches apart, just glass galore, you know, but, uh, that's all they do. They just put tape on the edges. No no other way of protecting it. You know, but while I was there, I mean, they're basically, they're, they're dealing with the uh, so-called professionals, you know, and I'm sure a lot of safety light. But they got their truck for delivering. While I was there, a lot of people were coming in their company trucks and picking glass up. So I pretty much got what I'd probably get if I paid somebody. The difference is I could have had this glass probably installed for 160. If I paid 150, somebody with an account's probably paying a lot less and it would have been a lot cheaper. I can't I can't deny that. It's more expensive doing it this way and buying everything and only using it for one windshield and this is definitely not the route you go for economy. This is the route you go if you got a reason that you want to do your own windshield. Which, if you really, really think about it, there's reasons why you may want to do your own windshield. But, uh, with mine primarily being, I want to be able to say I did a windshield. So, there's your five-minute ramble about windshields. I'll post anything else that I want to supplement now. Okay, I just did a prelim preliminary wipe. I took the tape off, which kind of pisses me off because you you can see it left like tape residue. That'll come off as I wipe it again. But, uh, yeah, that tape residue, that really fucking pisses me off. I Oh, I can feel the stickiness. It's like, really? You couldn't have just put some fucking cardboard corners on there and called it a day? Oh, well. I am changing my plans. Mind you, this is my first windshield, so I'm a newbie. This black strip, you can feel it. It's made into the window. So I don't know if all windshields are like that now or what, but I do not, I no longer want to scuff the shit out of the glass. If it was going to be like this, I would. But that right there is almost like a primer in itself. So I am just going to go ahead and not scuff it, and just use the microfiber when I use the Beta F1. The Beta F1 probably, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's going to probably be like a white cream looking stuff. It probably already has a small abrasive that's already in there. God, look at that shit. And that's after I already wiped it. But yeah, I just wanted to add that. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to wipe this down one more time, and I'm going to see how the uh, trim piece fits, the molding. I went ahead and uh, put the beta cleaner on. You can see it's kind of that foamy stuff. I recognize the smell. I definitely recognize the smell. So it's got to be something that's just rebottled. It wasn't that much more expensive. 
but uh, I am going to use my Mr. Clean Eraser. So I just got done. I did it twice with glass cleaner, regular glass cleaner. Actually, I used uh, Armor All glass cleaner just because that's what I always use on my glass anyways. And it really doesn't streak too bad. But use one of these bad boys right here. Now I'm going to use my Mr. Clean Eraser. And then after my Mr. Clean Eraser, I'm going to do it one more time with the uh, tiles. I like that I can kind of really push in with this, you know. We'll see if this takes off the adhesive from all that fucking box tape that they put on there. Okay, at this point, I've done my glass cleaner. That glue was a real pain in the butt. As a matter of fact, there may still be a smudge right there. See it? I've gotten just about all of it off using the Mr. Clean Eraser. Yeah, I got to go hit that one corner one more time. But you can see it comes up pretty damn clean. So I used the Mr. Clean Eraser, and then I used those blue uh, Tough Wipes or whatever they're called from Walmart, which, by the way, left lint. But fortunately, I had my air compressor, and that took care of the lint. And I'll be giving it a final wipe down with my microfiber towel to see if that leaves anything. Let me go ahead and uh, get that corner. Yeah, you can see... Why would you put fucking glue on a brand new goddamn fucking... Oh, God, people drive me nuts. It's that capitalism. Can't spend fucking four cents on cardboard. You got to spend two cents on tape. Oh, yeah, and my Mr. Clean? Staying real clean. E even with the glue that I'm taking up. So, that's a good sign. If that was dirty, I think I'd keep doing it until I saw that clean. But... Yep, I probably would have been better scrubbing with that end, huh? But yeah, that worked pretty good. Alrighty, you can see my sloppy application of the Beta Braid F1. Not the video for this part. Google that right there, Beta Braid F1, and you can see people doing it a lot, a lot better than me and using the recommended lint-free, well, not the recommended, a recommended lint-free paper towel. I am going to go like that and just kind of do like their videos show and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, good news. No issues with the uh, microfiber towels that I chose to use. They don't seem to be leaving lint. So now that's directly, you can't really see. You could see a little bit there. That's directly after using the Beta Braid. I did like their video said, and then I uh, inverted the towel, I flipped it on itself, made the center go outside, and I gave it a pass all around, and most of it's off. So now it's just going to be a final step of using glass cleaner, which I am going to do twice. I will say, when you use that stuff, you can feel that it has a uh, abrasive element within it. And then that black border, that, what do they call that? A ceramic frit, maybe? Is that what they call that? But you can feel that Beta F1 biting into it. I don't know how to explain it. it, it like if you're using a buffing compound on a car. You know, that was liquid. It's got that same feeling. It's even got a similar smell. Very similar smell. I, if, you, if I was blindfolded, I, was, I, I would think it was buffing compound. But uh, let me go ahead and give it the final wipes. I'm going to do it at least twice with two different clean microfiber tiles. Okay. Time to do my final clean. You know, that one spot never did come out, but the more I looked at it, that coating, it's, it's a flaw in the coating. Because I scrubbed at it pretty good, especially with the F1 Beta. 
So I want to do it one more time. Let you see how that stuff foams up. I had some uh, industrial stuff I used to use when I worked on ATMs. And that stuff smells the same, looks the same, foams up the same. By the way, I only needed one tire. I guess cause maybe because the window is convex or concave or whichever one it is, but... It, it didn't move a whole lot, even with me putting decent force into there. Okay, the glass is prepped. These edges should be as good as I can get them. I do like that F1 Beta Braid. I don't see why you couldn't use it with every product out there. It'd be different if they didn't have you do a final glass cleaner wipe after using it, you know. But they do. So, I would recommend everybody uses that stuff. I'm going to let it sit a little bit longer. <clears throat> make sure it's dry, dry. And then we're going to go ahead and put the uh, primer on there. Okay, I just lost an hour due to technical difficulties. Okay, if you're out there in YouTube world wanting to do this, I made my first fuck up. Make sure your molding fits before you start the project. You know, I've been waiting on this. It uh, took forever for the guy on eBay to ship it when it finally did ship it. You know, it was like a two-week process. So, Literally, I've had everything I need waiting on this molding. I got it, and I just ran to it, and I didn't even check it. But uh, that molding didn't fit. This shit on the right, I mean, it, it's first off, it's PVC. So, I mean, it's cold enough out that it's, you know, not staying pliable. Second off, this new stuff, I mean, you could see how deep that track is. And I mean, this, this is good. This is like what I'm used to seeing. It, it, the, just feeling it in my fingers, I, I can't emphasize how much better it is. So I actually got a part number. You know, I, I live out in the boonies and they're, they're, believe it or not, there's no auto body supply shops within an hour's drive. But I got lucky and I went to a local windshield place, told him what I had going on and for 10 bucks he sold me what I needed. <clears throat> wow, that's just like, seriously? I mean, this stuff didn't fit at all. I, I mean, not even remotely close. So I have a feeling this is, this is going to do the trick. Look at that deep channel. That's what I was hoping for. Actually, I can put a part number because when the, uh, the, when the guy looked up the part number, he called it over the intercom to have one of his, one of his guys in the shop bring up a spool of blah, 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 blah. I'll post it here. But yeah, this stuff's good. So let me go ahead and pop this on the window. Okay, so I had some technical difficulties. <clears throat> Hopefully you all on YouTube install your own windshield world. Don't make the same mistake I made. Make sure you test fit the glass first. Now I did test fit it. That's why I'm able to have this new glass here. But I didn't want to contaminate my pinch weld, so I went ahead, got the glass, wiped it all down, everything that you saw, put my uh, molding around it, and then that's when I went and I did a pre-fit, because I knew I had nice clean molding, you know, I, I didn't want to risk chipping the corners or any stupid paranoia shit like that. But at any rate, I go to put it in and that fucker didn't fit, man. It was pretty damn off. Come to find out that... uh. Well, okay, 92 and 93 have different windshields, but I had a 92 and a half cab. Halfway through, GM decided to uh, switch up the cab. So long story short, I got new glass. So the other thing I did, and I saw that Safe Flight does this, and uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of windshield people do this, especially when you use the universal molding. I went ahead and I ran a bead. 
as you can see, it's not the most beautiful bead, but I was also kind of playing with the trigger and practicing because this part's not detrimental. I did push a little too hard as I rounded, so that one was a little bit ugly. But again, I just want something to keep it on there. This stuff does like to work its way off, especially because, you know, you got that, you got that little flap on the side. And I mean, it's under some tension. So I went ahead and did that. Now what I did do, and this again was experimental, I didn't want to waste any of my good Dow shit that I like, you know, had the mortgage a left nut to buy. So I bought some, I, I went just to, uh, oh, I'll post it up here, I can't remember the name of it, and said, give me your cheapest shit that doesn't require primer, you know, just something to tack around there. Uh, I should have took a picture before I loaded in my caulk gun, but I'll go ahead and take a picture when I'm done recording and insert it now. Uh, this stuff, I actually, actually, uh, after I bought it, basically gave me the bullshit flag and said, oh, you need primer, yada, yada, yada. So I thought, well, I could probably use my dial primer, but then I thought, you know what, fuck it. I don't need primer for this part of the project, you know, and if not, I'll test it. You know, it's funny. I could get that stuff on my hand and have no primer and it doesn't want to come off. You get it on your car paint, you didn't use primer, it doesn't want to come off. So I think it's going to be fine. But that would be my recommendation if you want to do it better than I did. You know, either use the same stuff or use primer list or whatever. I was just, you know, at the last minute I decided to do that. So let's fast forward to the part of the video that you actually give a fuck. The gun, okay? The major holdup with this windshield project, oh, I'm sorry, I was all zoomed in. The major problem is the gun. I think I mentioned earlier, you know, you're, you're looking in, I don't know, 180, no, you got to count batteries. You're, you're at least 300 plus if you want to get a battery-powered gun, which is awesome if you do windshields for a living, but I'm going to try to go this pneumatic route. So far, so good. My only fear is I hope that that the shit's not so thick that when I go to put down a thick bead, that it, it, it either takes forever or it won't keep up. So this gun's not supposed to go over 90. Of course, I think I'm the first one guinea pigging it for a windshield. And everybody's like, oh, you know, watch your settings. Turn it down to like 15, 20 PSI. Turn the, the you know, the, the fine tracking knob down all the way and, you know, work your way up. You know, my shit was nut job and uh, shit 10 feet across the room. Well, they were all using caulk and stuff. They weren't, they weren't using urethane, which is a lot heavier. So I had to, I started low and it was slow. I mean, I could have done it when I put that little pin line on. I could have done it that way, but it would have taken forever. Now this is fine tuning, fully open. Of course, there's, I have no gauge rigged up on there. Gun getting a full 90 PSI, which is the most that they say to give it. I thought I said it there, but I guess not. But at any rate, I just nipped off the edge. You know what I mean? It's just big enough for me to, to basically fit this part of a pop rivet that I used when I, when I punctured the seal. So if you go to do the same thing and you try to use this gun which is going to be a hell of a lot cheaper. I'm going to try to do this now, one-handed on the phone and one-handed on the gun. You're going to see how fast that moves. And this one, like they advertised, is very good at turning off and... You know, no copper's gland or anything like that going on. When it's done, it's done. Okay, I got that done. So you can kind of get an idea. I put my thumb by it. And that was just with that little pinner line. Now, granted, it's got to push even harder to go through that little hole. But, yeah, that's, that's not very powerful. So I don't know what's going to happen when I try to put down my big bead. That's the beauty of Sean for Big Blocks Productions motherfuckers we experiment so i'm basically i just got done putting that bead down i'm gonna give that an hour they say 15 to 20 minutes is the cure time today's actually pretty warm well it's tonight now ran around all day you know having to get my 
other glass, drive 80 miles, yada, yada, yada. But at any rate, I'll be back for the next step. Alrighty, the prick that talks too much is back. So, I went ahead and knobbed my end off. Okay, probably just about as big as I could almost get my pinky in there. You know, I use these. Amazingly, it just cut really quick and it didn't even put any goo on my tool, except for I got my thumb a little bit. But bam, look at that. It worked great. And that's not even, you know, a precision cut like I'm going to do later on. So let me show you here. I just did my test run. 90 PSI and uh, fully open on the endpoint regulator. Oh yeah, look at that shit. Look at that, look at that. Ooh, God, that just almost makes me horny. What can I say? That's awesome. I did not want to go buy a million dollar caulking gun. You see what I mean? And yeah, it definitely flows a lot better without that the restriction of that little pinhole. So I think we're going to be in good shape. You know, we're going to notch it. We're going to triangle notch it. This one, by the way, this 3M stuff, it, it doesn't have a little guide where to cut it for windows. So you're on your own. As a matter of fact, it's way much more cock gunny like than the other one. I'll have to compare them. But uh, yeah, this is going to work pretty good. So just to be safe, I think I may let this go ahead and cure overnight. I'll give it 24 hours. I don't want that molding popping off. So we will see. Okay, kind of a low light situation here, but I went ahead and used my 3M pad and I scuffed up my pinch weld area that I painted. And then I got that bottle that I left. You can see it's kind of got a dullness to it now from the scuffing. I was going to use the uh, rubbing alcohol, and then I left it at home. I didn't have any in my shop, so I was too lazy to drive, and I just went ahead and used mineral spirits. I scrubbed it really good once with mineral spirits, and then I went over it again, and I just used the one swipe, one pass method for the final wipe, and then I blew it off with my air compressor. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the Dow Pinch Weld Primer over the paint, which Dow is the only company I have found that says you can do that. And what I'm hoping is that if there's anything in the urethane that would interact with the paint that would degrade the integrity of the paint, maybe that Pinch Weld Primer is going to be our barrier. Because Pinch Weld Primer can definitely go on paint. Even though they say not to put it on paint, I mean... You know, it, it'll make a barrier. We shall see. If it doesn't work, I'm going to let you know. Okay, before I get into the pinch weld primer, this is the secondary crap that I used. 3M08690. Cheap, readily available, last minute decision. I literally used that much of it. Let me try to get a finger in. Almost my full pointer finger so about that much which is actually kind of scary because all I did was that that little pinner line on the windshield and all this stuff that you saw with me playing now this has been a while I was going to wait overnight but it took a few hours this little these little ones are pretty much good to go you can tell they're workable they're not fully cured but they're workable these, I can touch them, but I mean, they're puffy. You know, it's like I'm squeezing a, a slug or something. But wouldn't you know I'm having excessive humidity issues. You look at my floor, and it's just coated with water. You know, it's so humid right now. We got a southern front coming in, and it's bringing in the, uh, the gulf air, and it's just real humid. So it's not an ideal situation to do windows probably, but 
That's why we do things like we do on Sean for Big Blocks to see if it'll work. So, not ideal, but good because it's going to be another guinea pig route. So, but I wonder if that would not have cured a little better if it wasn't so humid. But with that being said, this stuff, I mean, it is, it moisture does help cure it. So it's probably not the end of the world. The only other thing I wanted to mention, you know, when I did, when I did this paint, you could see where I overlapped about, oh, I'd say just a little shy of an eighth of an inch. And that, you see that weight line? I didn't blend it or anything. That whole entire weight line, as planned, fits underneath my molding, which was what I was hoping for. It gave me that nice, you know, except for that corner. I guess I was, like, being stupid, and I'm a little embarrassed. My other corner was rounded, but... And no, this I didn't do this paint job. That's why this is a guinea pig, because it needs to be painted anyways. So this just slightly sticks out. Probably because the way the top of the glass is, it doesn't quite butt up all the way. So I don't get as much much coverage on my uh, molding. But I can go ahead and between solvents and a plastic razor blade, it's very little that sticks out. But I just wanted to throw that out there. So got that oxidation off. Got, you know, the top layer of paint dust off. Went with the uh, scuff pad, you know. Used one side, one side, one side, one side, all the way around the window. I guess if you wanted to be nitpicky, you could just keep using new ones, but I'm not being that picky. It worked. So let me show you the caulk gun. You know, you're used to having a plunger push, right? And it can be messy at times. Let's see if I can get some light over here. This is really basic. Yeah, you can kind of see that. That's all it is, man. It's just an open hole that pushes air, you know. It's that simple. And it literally, that air just, you know, pushes the built-in plunger that's on the, uh, comes on the tube. And it's literally just simple. You know, there's no fighting it or anything or, you know, pulling back and cranking anything. And then you just spin your top on and it's good to go. Now, what I did want to show you, I'm pretty sure, where did I put my box? Hold on. Okay, I wanted to show you that end piece. I know I showed it earlier. Let's see if this light works a little bit better. Yeah, I can't see it through the camera. Right at the center tip of my thumb. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I love that. I don't know why the other one didn't do that. But you can see there's a pretty big difference in the size of those. You know, one's like a standard caulker, and that's a husky bitch. So that's quite a bit different right there. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my pinch mold primer on. And then, you know, they say give it 10 minutes. I got humidity, so I'm going to give it a little while. 20, 30 minutes, whatever, while I prep. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to see if maybe... If I'm going to use a drywall razor blade or I may even just die grind it and then blow the dust out and clean it with mineral spirits. Let's see how that goes because this is pretty tough. I mean, this, you know, this is already pretty tough. I'm sure you've snipped these off. I just snipped that end off with a pair of uh, dikes, but th this is extra hard. You know, it's premium. Okay, I put my pinch mold primer on. This stuff's black. You can kind of see it on the end of the cap there. It is black. There's my dauber. One thing I will note. Get a larger dauber. Let's see. I'll try to get my finger up there for reference. I did not know when I was getting these they would be that small. At least I don't remember or did I notice them giving a size. That Look how small that shit is, man. So like... There it is. I just put it on. It's still kind of wet. It's very, very drippy stuff. I was expecting it <clears throat> to be kind of thick, you know, like syrupy or like molasses. You could even see I dripped a little bit right there. Sloppy ass shit. So if you're doing a real nice car that you care about the spots you don't see anyways, be careful of that. 
I may actually fill that in a little bit, but at any rate, I didn't double dip, okay? I used four daubers, but you could see how small it didn't cover very well. So I literally did my one swipe pass, made sure I butted up into the into the 90 degree elbow there, and then I came back, you know, I started, you know, top center. I came back and I did like the outer edge. And then I got a new dauber, dipped it. That's why I dripped there. I guess I didn't have enough of it out. And then I just swiped, literally I did like one, two, three, four. Because I wanted to cover that whole area. But, yep. Yeah. A bigger dauber would have been nicer because ideally it should be a one pass thing but as long as you don't double dip it I think that's what the big deal is but that'll work for what I'm doing yep see even that one dipped and I was extra careful that time this stuff's drippy it's almost got the consistency of water I'm not shitting you I'll tell you what though these people that Oh, you don't got to prep the surface. You just got to put a little pinch well down there. Yeah, blow me. Bullshit. There's no way in hell a little pinch well is going to do the trick. If it was that good, we wouldn't etch cars and primer cars. We'd just put pinch weld and then we'd spray them. But we don't do that. There's a reason why we don't do that. Because the last guy that did this window, here I am fixing the pinch weld that his pinch weld sealer shit didn't work on. But yeah, look at that drip. And I mean, I, it didn't seem like I was putting it on that thick. But it's 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 drippy stuff. So, I guess if you want to practice ahead of time, it may not be a bad idea. Okay, I'm getting ready to uh, <clears throat> do the uh, primer, the pinch bolt primer on the windshield. As you can see, I went ahead and did it one last time with the glass cleaner. Oh, I got hiccups in the beta braid. You can see that little white line. It looks worse on film than it actually does. And that got into that little crevice in between the urethane and the molding. But their instructions specifically say that that'll happen. Don't worry about it. You just don't want to wipe that and then wipe it back over the clean area also because i have the humidity issue i assisted the drying with my air compressor and i made sure i blew away and just pss, 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 real gently so i didn't blow any of that beta braid out of the cracks because you don't want beta braid on your clean surface so pinch wool time Okay, so I got the pinch hold primer on the glass. I probably didn't need to go all the way to the edge, and I'm a little wavy. I don't have the most steady hand. Looks in the camera like I missed spots there, but that's glare. Once again, my daubers are super small, so I had to do three passes. This stuff's real drippy. I did drip a little in the corner, used a little mineral spirits and cleaned it, but I can use between mineral spirits, acetone, and glass buffing compounds. I can get all that perfect later. I just want to make sure I'm going to have everything covered. Okay, I made my cut. <clears throat> Played a little bit with the razor blade. It would have worked, but I decided to dremel it. I don't know which would have turned out better. I mean, it turned okay. It turned out okay. I'll give you a dimension schematic now. But basically what I did, I used my Dremel tool. I use a uh, Dremel 4000 because I like the variable speed. And, uh, boy, I don't know if I could tell you what speed I used. It's just kind of 15. Nope, let me get the camera on there. I was right about 15. That's where I was comfortable, but I was able to, that, that just effortlessly cut, you know, you can kind of see how I could, if I can hold the camera right, how you could just real nicely just, you know what I mean? And then after I notched that out, 
I just came with a, not a drywall, but a, just a thin standard razor blade. Cleaned up that, that, you know, I got a little more to clean up, but, you know, cleaned up that stuff and that should do the job. That's pretty much where they want it. So I'll put my finger there just to give you a reference of that hole. I mean, it's. There you go. Dimensions will be a lot better, though. Okay, ran into another problem. We show you this shit on Sean for Big Blocks, right? The inner diameter of my caulking tube is about roughly 0.901. I did it level, and, you know, now I got to do it one-handed. But, uh... See if I can do this while I'm recording. One point zero two. I'm going to have to wallow it out. So I'm going to put this sucker in my drill press. This is actually my cheap one. I got a good cobalt one and it's hiding on me, but, uh, Hopefully this one will do the trick. Okay, the high-speed steel rasp worked. It took a good five minutes, but it's in. And I basically got the notch with the gun level notched to the right. Got the glass in. Had the wife help me. Use some uh, suction cups from the hardware store that I use for tile. Only had three. Had to buy another one. In a two-year window, you can't get uh, red anymore. I guess it's been more than two years. And once it sets, I'll clean it up. Some of this buttle from the trim I'll take off. Definitely not the best idea to go so close to this black. I really don't know what I was thinking when I put that pinch hole primer down. I had to use acetone to clean it up. And it smeared and good old Mr. Clean Eraser helped that out. So it's 99% back to clean. But that was kind of a pain in the butt. But uh, there you go. I will post in the comment box and let you know if I have any water issues, any wind issues, any issues whatsoever. But the glass is in and that makes me happy. It really wasn't that bad. Using the caulk gun was a little bit hard. I'm not going to lie. Having the uh having that goofy end on there cut, that's goofy. I mean, I've done a lot of like bathroom caulking and you know hardware type shit. I mean, I think personally, if I was gonna do it again, I'd go with the old flat cut. You know, by doing it that way that I did it, it's like literally you got to keep it ninety degrees, and you know you can only travel one way. I would have much rather just had my caulk gun on an angle and done it the way that is second nature to me. But it worked. I got a pretty good beat of caulk. I wish I would have had a tripod for that, but you're not going to see much with me doing it. I guess the only thing I would have done different was I started right about there. And then I went counterclockwise all the way around like that and then doubled back so that really all i had to do mending wise was right here and i mean i basically just sat right in the middle on my motor because then i was able to get that in one swipe most of the guys i see on youtube you know it's a customer car they can't do that they can't stand on the hood 
So it's like they start right in the middle, and then there's a mending spot, which isn't the end of the world, but I'm just thinking to myself, that top and these corners, you know, that's where I want my best seal, personally. Gravity will take care of the rest, but you have a pinhole up top there, and gravity's going to take care of that in a bad way. So, there's my video. If you got any other questions or I left anything out, just fire away.